Hey, what's up guys? Sammy here, and today I've got a review of the Klipsch Reference Theatre Pack, which is a 5.1 surround sound system. First up though, I'd just like to say a special thanks to Qualify for sending this out for review, but without further ado, let's take a closer look. So the Klipsch Reference Theatre Pack includes four satellite speakers, a centre speaker, and a subwoofer. The speakers feature a frequency response of 110Hz to 23kHz, they also feature a power rating of 50 watts continuous usage, or 200 watts at its max peak, on the satellite speakers, and 75 watts continuous usage or 300 watts at its max peak on the center speaker. Design-wise, the speakers come in a quality plastic construction in this black design. You'll also find each speaker features a LTS tweeter and spun copper injection molded graphite woofers. You'll also find a removable front grille cover which you can use to protect your speakers from dust and improve the look of your setup depending on your liking. On the back of the satellite speakers you'll find a keyhole with that quarter inch times 20 fretted insert whilst on the center speaker you'll find a dual keyhole with that dual quarter inch times 20 fretted inserts for mounting. Lastly on the back of the speakers you'll find those spring loaded binding posts Unfortunately, these don't support banana plugs, which I did try. That being said, Klipsch recommends between 14 to 18 gauge speaker wiring. You'll also find that massive subwoofer, which is also referenced as the R-100SW, which features a 10 inch sub and a frequency response of 32 hertz to 120 hertz, and a power rating of 150 watts continuous and 300 watts at its max peak. The R-100SW also features that spun copper injection molded graphite woofer which helps to provide a low frequency response with minimal distortion. You can also remove the removable grille cover from the front of the R-100SW and you'll find an LED indicator to let you know the subwoofer is turned on. Something interesting about the power switch on the back is if it's set in auto mode after 15 minutes of no signal it will put the subwoofer in standby mode to save power and then turn back on when it receives signal. Kind of neat. Whilst I was looking through the manual, I noticed that it's a wireless transmitter slash receiver. However, this is only for the US version and the Australian model which is a 10 inch sub versus the 8 inch sub in the US. Just something to note. Let's talk about how this system really sounds. I've got to say coming from the Logitech Z906, I had my expectations set pretty high. And I've got to say straight off the bat, I was very impressed. So much to the point of where I started laughing because I was in such awe. It was truly a whole new experience for me. So now that I've had some time with the system, yes, it's become sort of the norm, but I'm not taking away from that experience. And I'm still very impressed, especially with its rich bass tones from the R-100SW. You can really feel the bass from the floor, especially in action-packed scenes, and it literally shakes the windows in my office. That's how powerful the subwoofer really is. The system, when paired with the Denon AVR-X2600H, really delivers superb performance and offers just the right amount of clarity in terms of mids to highs with those great low ends. Music not only sounds amazing on these speakers, but movies are really really where it shines and you get those cinematic experiences. There's a particular scene in Star Wars The Last Jedi where Vice Admiral Holdo launches a ship at the enemy at light speed, destroying the enemy ship and the shockwave of sound that follows is where I found the R-100SW really takes center stage. You can really feel the build up to its impact and the extensive effect that follows through where it literally felt like the room was shaking. It's an amazing experience that you have to experience for yourself to understand and to me this made me feel like I was at the cinema. If I had any feedback to give for the speakers it'd be the ability to use banana plugs instead of its spring-loaded design. That would have been nice as I recently upgraded my speaker wiring to 14 gauge and I'm using banana plugs in combination with the Denon AVR-X2600 H to keep my setup organized. That being said, the Klipsch reference feeder pack delivers a powerful punch with its incredible soundstage, and whilst I wouldn't consider myself a true audiophile, I can appreciate the extent of this home feeder package. So who would I recommend the Klipsch reference feeder pack to then? I think if you're just getting started with your own home theater setup and you want an all-in-one system, it's great, but you will need an AVR and that can also set you back a bit as well. There is also the point that you might be better off buying the best speakers that you can afford at the time individually and build up your home theater over time. 
Personally, I think these speakers though fit really well within my space and its soundstage is a huge upgrade for me going from the Logitech Z906. But that's going to wrap it up for my review of the Klipsch Reference Theatre Pack. Please note all the opinions in this video are my own and nobody saw the video before it was published. Anyways, hope you guys have an awesome day and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.